whenever you have a cabinet secretary who you oversight appear in the house, part of your oversight role as a chair is to make sure that you come and hold that cabinet secretary to account. And I say that with the Honorable Pio and I here, because he has been the leader of minority, holding people to account. Now it is his time to be held to account. And when he comes, I would expect that the Honorable Aramat, Honorable Kawai, and members of the Energy Committee, you will be there because you will be interacting with the CS and the PS uh, more often than anybody else uh, to hold them to account and oversight. That is a time to offer real and meaningful oversight. And indeed, when we change our standing orders to allow the cabinet secretaries to appear before the House to answer to questions and statements, the intent was basically to reaffirm our constitutional mandate as a house that oversights uh, these cabinet secretaries. And as Honorable Junet said in passing, uh, the house that can also impeach them. And uh, you've seen we have really done well that in that respect. Uh, therefore, <laughs> let notice be served, not to the one who is here, but to all of them that uh, should you not uh, up your game. <laughs> the season is here, as Junet says. We lost the finance bill and lost very many good proposals that were in that finance bill because of negative publicity, because of poor communication, and that is part of the reevaluation and reflection we need to do as a house collectively. How else can we communicate better? Besides what we have said, what the clerk and the leader of minority have said that we need to do to engage with the bills ourselves as leaders and be able to articulate better what is contained in this bill so that you are not confronted by members of the fourth estate with questions as to what is contained in bills or even in social media platforms. Honorable Speaker, I remember during the finance bill,